All right, welcome back to another episode. We're going to go ahead and talk about query parameters. And I'm going to show you how we can handle that in our Express server. So what exactly are query parameters? Well, query parameters are pretty much just a set of parameters that are uh, that make together a query string. And they are typically uh, attached to the very end of the URL. Okay, you may have seen them before in the browser in the address bar. So for example, uh, let's say if we are going to Google, okay, a very common query parameter is the Q parameter. And that just stands for query. Okay, and if you assign it some value, it would actually search for that value in Google. Same thing with Bing. So for example, I, could, I could go ahead and search for Java. And if you were to take this URL and just paste it directly in the browser, what would happen is it would literally just bring you to the Google homepage and it would have Java uh, already filled out in the text box. Okay. So the query string, so the query string includes the question mark and the query parameter itself is Q. Okay. And you can have multiple query parameters such as, let's say for example, if you wanted to filter out your search results, you can go ahead and do something like filter by, and then you can specify some additional value. And if you wanted to have multiple query parameters, you would just need to concatenate it with an ampersand. Okay, so it's gonna start off with a question mark, and then the parameter name, and then an equal sign. And then after this key value pair, you can think of it like a key value pair. Okay, if you want another query parameter, you would just add an ampersand and you would specify that query parameter. So let's go ahead and take a look at query parameters on our Express server. I'm gonna show you how we can actually access them. So let's go over to, let's work with our markets uh, router. So let's step away from groceries, let's work on markets. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and just modify our, our objects inside the supermarkets array. I'm gonna go ahead and just give it an ID first off. Whoops. And we'll go ahead and do that. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and uh, create another parameter or another property. I'll call this uh, miles and we'll go ahead and make this a numeric value. So this is just going to represent the amount of miles away the supermarket is from. So pretend like in a real application, uh, you're trying to search for all local supermarkets and you want to also make sure you are getting the closest supermarkets nearby. Okay, so let's go ahead and just give a number for each. Okay, and let me go ahead and add a couple more. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll add another Trader Joe's that's 3.5 miles away and we'll add one Albertsons that's also just 1.8 miles away. Okay, so what we wanna do next is we wanna go ahead and provide some query parameters in the route URL to get us only supermarkets that are less than, let's say three miles away. So in our case, it would give us uh, one, two, three, and four. So it gives a total of four records, okay? Now, how do we do that? Well, we can use a query parameter. So that query parameter would be something like uh, it could be something like miles, for example. So if I go into Postman, and if I were to make a request, it would look something like, uh, so we, we would call slash API slash V1 slash markets, and then we would add a question mark at the end of the URL, and then we would specify the, uh, the name of the query parameter. So we'll call it miles, and then we can pass in a value, so something like three, for example. Or it could be a in a decimal, like a floating point. So if I were to run this, okay, right now it's not doing anything. And it's really a lot different than route parameters. And I'll talk a little bit about that in the end on the differences between the two, between route parameters and query parameters. But right now, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and get the actual query parameter, which is miles. So we can get that by referencing request.query. And this is similar to request.params. It pretty much populates all the query parameters in an object. So right now, if I were to go into the console, 
well let's first make a request and then i'm going to go i'm going to go to the console and you're going to see that i have an object and that object has a property called miles which is going to be whatever this parameter is right over here whatever that's called and it's going to give me the value three if i were to go ahead and add other parameters too let's say if we want to sort by and then let's say sort in ascending order so let's do something like asc which is a common common thing that you would do when it comes to filtering out results okay that would also be added inside the object as well okay so we will sort the results based off of uh, the miles in ascending order for example and if you wanted to add more route parameters you can also do that as well okay but let's go ahead and do this what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take the miles query parameter and if you wanted to add more query parameters you can add as many as you want okay it's again it's up to what you need to do in your application now what we're going to do is let's go ahead and get the actual miles. So I'm going to go ahead and destructure that from request.query. Now, unlike route parameters, uh, route parameters actually are going to be defined all the time. Because with route parameters, if you actually don't provide the route parameter, it's not going to know which route to actually visit. It's going to visit a different route. So for example, if I don't provide the item route parameter, it'll just visit this uh, this default slash route over there. Okay, so with route parameters, the majority of the time, they're always going to be defined. If they're not defined, in fact, they're always going to be defined actually, because if they're not defined, then it's going to try to find um, the next route if it's mapped or not, right? And if it's not, it's just going to return a four for not found. Okay, so with query parameters, we do need to check to see if it's truthy or not. So what we'll do is we'll say, okay, if miles is truthy, then this tells us that we need to actually filter out the results based on miles. However, if miles is not truthy, we can just return all the supermarkets. So the unfiltered results. Now, since the uh, miles is actually a string, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and uh, parse it to an integer. So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable called parsed miles and we'll go ahead and call parse int miles okay so uh we're basically taking the string and we're going to parse it so we're going to go ahead and first we're going to check to see if miles is truthy and we're going to check to see if uh if parsed miles is actually a number so uh if parse int returns nan that means the user passed in an invalid numeric value. Okay, so we're going to check to see if it's not NAN, okay, which NAN stands for not a number. So is NAN is going to return true if it's not a number, so we just have to negate that value. Okay, so if both of these conditions are satisfied, then we'll go ahead and continue. So we'll go ahead and take, uh, let's see, actually, um, yeah, well, this is fine. So what we can do is we can actually just remove this uh, this miles and part because if miles is undefined uh, and if we try to parse that, it's just going to return nan as well. Okay, so this is perfectly fine. Validation. So what we can do now is we can go ahead and just simply uh, filter out. So we can go ahead and create a variable called filtered stores. And we're going to go ahead and reference our supermarkets array. So we'll pretend like that's some database, right? And we're going to go ahead and call dot filter. And then we're going to go ahead and return every single store where uh, s dot miles is less than or equal to miles. Okay, so we're basically going through every single element inside this array. And we're checking to see if the current element's miles is less than Actually, I'm sorry, it's not miles, it's parsed miles. Here we go. So if let's say, for example, we're at Whole Foods right now, and the current miles is 0 0.06. Or I'm sorry, not 0 0.06, 0 0.6. Well, uh, this condition is going to return true because 0 0.6 is less than or equal to parsed miles if we pass in 3, which was the value that we said we we're going to pass in. So that'll give us back uh, Whole Foods, and it's going to keep doing that until we run out of elements right so 
Let's go ahead and send that back now. Okay. And let's see what happens. So let's go ahead and remove this sort by. So now you're going to see we should get only four records. Okay. If I change it to five, it should give us five records. So one, two, three, four, five. If I change it to uh, one mile away, it's going to give us just one record, which makes total sense. Okay. Let me just change this Trader Joe's to one. Okay. So it's going to give us two records now. Okay, so that's pretty much how you can use query uh, query parameters. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, now let's go ahead and just spend the rest of this video just to talk about the differences between route parameters and query parameters. So when would you use one over the other? Okay, because I know this can be confusing to some people. Well, typically when it comes to route parameters, right, what you want to use them for is to identify a resource on the server. So for example, we have route parameters set up for a grocery item, and that basically represents a resource that lives on our server, okay? The grocery item is gonna likely be saved on our database or it could be saved in memory, okay? So it wouldn't make sense to use a query string for that or a query parameter, because typically when it comes to query parameters, you would use that to actually filter out or sort said resources. So let's say for example, if we wanted to filter out our grocery list based off of the, the quantity, that would be a good use case to use a query parameter, okay? So typically in a real application, what you will have is you'll have a general endpoint that returns the main resource, like a collection of the instances, right? So it, so for example, our groceries endpoint returns uh, three grocery items, okay? Well, what we can do is we can add a query parameter for this endpoint, when we call this endpoint, we can add a query parameter and we can filter out all the grocery items based on the quantity. So let's say, for example, we only want to get all the grocery items in the grocery list where the quantity is greater than or equal to two. We can do that. Okay. So remember, route parameters are used to identify a resource. So things that will live on the server. Okay and query parameters are used to just sort and filter out or basically manipulate not really manipulate the data but manipulate the response okay i, I don't want to say manipulate data because we're not really changing or mutating the data all we're doing is we're just changing the way that we are retrieving the data so for example if you actually use uh applications like ebay if you've used like any uh any kind of like you know application that has its own like search engine to search for results and stuff, right? You'll oftentimes see in the URL a query string with a bunch of query parameters, and you'll see very common stuff such as sort, sorting, filtering, uh, listing, uh, listing the prices between low to high, high to low, and etc. So I hope that explanation makes sense. So thank you for watching this video, and I will see you all in my next episode. Peace out.